Let's continue with example 2.3. So here, instead of being given a graph like we were given in the previous parts, we're given information directly. So we're told that there are two x-intercepts of 7 and 10. So I just wrote down the coordinates and the points here. So 7 comma 0 is the first x-intercept, 10 comma 0 is the second one. We're also told that the function passes through negative 2 comma 27. Now one thing, uh, a common mistake you want to avoid here is accidentally thinking that just because the graph passes through this point that it must be a vertex. If it were a vertex, the question would have said that. Now it might turn out that this is the vertex. It isn't, but it might be the vertex. However, unless the question specifically says that this point is the vertex, like it did in, say, this question, where we were given a point that the line passed through, or the curve passed through, and we were given that 4, negative 9 was the vertex, we cannot make that assumption. So just because I have a point that the curve passes through does not mean that it is the vertex. We cannot assume that. So we start by listing our x-intercepts and our givens, which is our point. And then the equation in intercept form is this familiar a times the quantity x minus p times the quantity x minus q. p and q are your x-intercepts. So all we have to do, as before, is plug in the numbers. We know that the y-coordinate is 27, so that goes there. a is the unknown, that comes along. The x-coordinate is negative 2, so that goes there. Minus p, our first x-intercept is 7, so that goes there x again negative 2 and q is our second x intercept 10 so that goes there some arithmetic cleanup leads up to 27 equals a times negative 2 minus 7 is simply negative 9 and then negative 2 minus 10 is negative 12. if we multiply these two constants negative 9 times negative 12 yields a positive 108 a Hopefully this is pretty simple and we're almost home. A can be found by dividing 27 by 108, which simplifies to 1 fourth. So the equation in intercept form is y equals a, which is 1 fourth, we just found it, times the quantity x minus p, p is 7, times the quantity x minus q, q is 10. Now, before we get into another example, a couple of things I wanted to point out. This is a pretty big if or a when. So this is the first thing you always want to check before you start analyzing the patterns to determine if you have quadratic data or if you have linear data, or neither, perhaps. So the most important key here is to make sure that you have equally spaced inputs. What that means is that the distance between the inputs has to be the same. So looking ahead at this example, the distance between 1 and 2 is 1, distance between 2 and 3 is 1, and essentially all the numbers here are equidistant. They're all one apart. Here we observe the same trend. Negative 3 to negative 2 is 1, negative 2 to negative 1 is one distance, and then one distance, and then so on. So this assessment that we're about to make only works if the inputs are equally spaced. So you don't want to draw inferences based on incorrect assumptions. You, you want to make sure that that assumption is satisfied. Now we know that x squared is, is the canonical or the, the parent function for all quadratics. So if we take a look at some x and y values, so if we plug in negative 3 in here, we'll get 9. Negative 2 squared, the quantity squared would be 4. Negative 1, the quantity squared would be 1, and then so on. So anytime we, we analyze data for whether it's linear, quadratic, or neither, you always want to check first, are the inputs equally spaced? In this case, yes, I have a check mark here, so I'm going to continue on. Then what you want to do is determine the first and second difference, if needed. So the first difference is essentially, what is 4 minus 9? You're looking at the y values, or the difference between the y values. So the first difference is, you look at the y value and you subtract the previous one. So 4 minus 9 gives us negative 5. 1 minus 4 gives us negative 3. 0 minus 1 gives us negative 1. 1 minus 0 gives us 1. 4 minus 1 is 3. And then finally, 9 minus 4 is 5. If all of these numbers were the same, this would have been a linear set of data, or this would have been modeled by a linear function. Because these first differences are not the same, 
we say that it's not a linear function or this is not linear data. What happens if we investigate the second difference? So now we do negative three minus negative five. So that's really negative three plus five and negative three plus five is two. Negative one minus negative three is negative one plus three, which is two. One minus negative one is really one plus one, which is two. Three minus one is two, five minus three is two. So what we observe here is constant second difference. It's the difference of the first difference. So whenever you have a constant second difference, that is indicative of quadratic data. So now that we have that, now actually, before we move on, if the first difference is not constant and the second difference is not constant, then it's neither linear nor quadratic. So it's not required that all sets of data have to be linear or quadratic. They could be cubic and they could be quartic. Uh, or they could not have a pattern at all. It might just be a random uh, set of points. If you have equally spaced inputs and your first differences are the same, then you have linear data. If your first difference is not the same, but the second difference is the same for equally spaced inputs, then you have quadratic data. So let's see how this would actually be applied. And here's a simple question that says, analyze the differences in the outputs to determine whether the data are linear, quadratic, or neither. Neither would be the case if the first difference is not constant and the second difference is not constant. Some, it could be something else, but it's not those two for sure. Secondly, if the data is linear or quadratic, we're expected to write an equation that fits the data. So come up with an equation that fits or that the point 1 comma 424 passes through and 2 comma 416 passes through and then so on. So here, first question again, as before, is we're looking at a set of data to determine if it's linear or quadratic. Are the inputs equally spaced? And they are, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, they're all one apart. And if we look at our first difference, I'll let you do the computations. So pause the video, do these computations yourself to convince yourself that the first difference really is not constant. But as a reminder, 416 minus 424 would give us the negative 8. 376 minus 416 would give us negative 40, and then so on. So please pause the video, do these other three computations, and convince yourself that these three are not the same. Now, once you've done that, do the computations for the second difference. So negative 40 minus negative 8, which would give us negative 32. And then do these three computations as well to convince yourself indeed that the second difference is constant. So once you've determined that the second difference is constant, here you want to use the standard form of the quadratic equation. So this is the third scenario or the third example that we talked about at the beginning in the core concepts. Given three points, in this case we're given maybe six or seven points, we want to write and solve a system of three equations in three variables. So here we use the standard form to our advantage and essentially just plug in three points. Any of these three six will do. So if I plug in the first point, one comma 424, I get the equation 424 equals a times one squared, well that's just a, plus b times one, well that's just b, plus c. So this is my first equation. And then if I plug in 2 comma 416, I get y equals 416 equals a times 2 squared, that's 4a, plus b times 2, that's 2b, plus c, plus c. This is equation 2 for us. And then I just use the third point. And again, there's nothing special about these three first points. You could have used the last three points and you'd come up with the same equation, assuming you do the problem correctly. Or you could have chosen all the even x values, or you could have chosen all the odd x values. Either way, the answer would be the same. And then similarly, if we choose the third point, 3 comma 376, y is 376, a times 3 squared gives us 9a, so that's there. b times 3 gives us 3b, that's there, plus the c. So this is my third equation. I have three equations in three variables, 
we should be able to solve this by using addition or elimination, uh, depending on the, the phrase you might have heard before. So I'm going to start by subtracting equation two from equation one. And the goal here is to get rid of the C's because if I subtract two from one, the C's will cancel out. So I write down equation one on top. And then when I subtract, recall that all the signs have to flip. So because all the signs here are positive, when I subtract the terms or subtract the equation entirely, all the signs will be opposite. So 424 minus 416 will give us 8. A minus 4A is negative 3A. B minus 2B is negative B. And then C minus C, this cancels out, and you're left with 0. So, oh, sorry, before I move on, this I'm going to title equation 4. It's, it's best to keep numbering your equations as you go along so that you know uh, which equation you're referencing at any given time, uh, especially if you need to do other computations. So since I used up 1 and 2 already, I'm going to use 2 and 3 and get rid of C again. I'm going to do that by subtracting equation 3 from equation 2. So pause the video, convince yourself that this indeed was done correctly. And once you've done that, recognize that you get an equation that's 40 equals negative 5a minus b. And this is going to be equation 5 for us. So pause the video, do this calculation or this computation yourself, convince yourself that all the signs are done, are switched correctly, and that all the cancellations and subtractions and additions were, were carried out correctly. So pause the video, then come back. Hopefully you'd have had a chance to do that. And now what I'm going to do is solve this two by two system. I have two equations, equation four and five, and I have two variables. And that's why it's called a two by two system. And we're going to do this by subtracting equation five from equation four. So again, uh, equation five, all the signs have to flip. So the 4D becomes negative 40, the 5A, negative 5A becomes positive 5A negative b becomes positive b. Then these two equations cancel out, or I'm sorry, these two b's cancel out. 8 minus 40 would give us negative 32. Negative 3a plus 5a would give us a positive 2a. And now we have a one by one system, or what you might have called affectionately a linear equation in one variable. We should be able to solve these with our eyes closed. So all we have to do is just divide the two over to the other side to solve for a. So a gives us, or a is negative 32 over 2, which gives us negative 16. Now all we have to do is back substitute. So if a is 16, and we plug it into, say, equation 4, we could have plugged it into equation 5 as well. It, it would have done the same exact thing. But if a is negative 16, negative 8 equals negative 3 times negative 16 minus b, negative 3 times negative 16 is 48. So we have 48 minus b on the right hand side that this cleans up into. And then in order to solve for b, what I did was I moved the b over to the other side and I moved the 8 over to the other side. Pause the video, make sure you can follow the computation. There are other ways to, to solve this linear equation as well, which is you know move the 48 over. So pause the video at this stage, make sure that you're able to, to agree that b is indeed 40. And then finally, since we know what a and b are, we can go back to say equation one and substitute those in to solve for c. And c turns out to be 400. And this gives us our equation in standard form. y equals negative 16, which was a, x squared plus bx, b was 40, so 40 right there, plus c, c was 400. Part two of this example, here we're given some time and height data, maybe the height of a person, maybe the height of a plant, but uh, there's time that's mentioned in days, that's our input, and then there's the height of something uh, that's measured in inches, that's y. Whenever we're analyzing data, we want to check for spaced inputs, whether they're equal or not. So three, 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 three. The hops are all x equals three, so we know that they're equally spaced. Now we look at the first difference. So 30 minus 36 would give us negative 6. 24 minus 30 gives us negative 6. 18 minus 24 is negative 6. 
12 minus 18 is yet another negative 6. And then finally, 6 minus 12 is also negative 6. So here, this tells us that the first difference itself is constant. I don't have to look for the second difference if the first difference is constant, because this tells me that the data is linear, that it's not quadratic. At this stage, you have two options. You can choose your favorite approach to come up with the equation of the line. In order to come up with the equation of a line, I am given six points. All I need is two of them. So using these first two points, I can come up with the slope of the line. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 is the formula for the slope of a straight line. Plugging the numbers in where they belong, we get that the slope is negative 2. Now, two ways to approach this problem. You can either recognize that if the x-coordinate is 0, the y-coordinate is what b is going to be. That's going to be our y-intercept. So you can either recognize this directly from the table, which is done in option 1. So if we wanted to use slope-intercept form, we need to know what our m and b are. And we do. m is negative 2, so that goes there. And b from the table is 36. So this is done. Option 2, let's say that you're not given a y-intercept. Maybe this was, I don't know, 1, 36, and everything else is shifted by, by 3. Then you wouldn't be able to use this approach because we don't know what the y-intercept is. So in that case, or even in this case, you could have found the slope using the same two points or any other pair of points on this line and then used the point slope form, which is y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1. Plug in any point, so y minus 30. And by the way, there's a minor typo here. Uh, this should be 3. Oh, I'm sorry. Brain fart. Uh, y minus 30 equals negative 2 times the quantity x minus 3. Now we can distribute the negative 2. y minus 30 would be negative 2 times x plus negative 2 times negative 3, which is positive 6. Then we can add the 30 over to the other side and get y equals negative 2x plus 36, which is the exact same equation we had right here. That's it. Hopefully you found this helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, as always, please feel free to reach out.